Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. So today I'll do unboxing of the Senada Osprey, this cargo electric bicycle. And I'll do unboxing, assembly, and I will go for the speed test to show you how the bicycle perform. So once you open up, everything so neat. The charger are marked as a charger, so you don't need to guess what is inside. These are uh, most likely tools and let's see oh it's marked as well it's a pedal and tools let's open and see what is inside so the charger is 3 amp charger which is good because the battery is so large on this bicycle okay and let's see what is inside what kind of tools they included so we got the large pedals marked left and right very important you got multi tools and also a wrench tool which looks real good 15 millimeters size and that's how the bike looks inside the box so the wheel is attached so i'm gonna remove first the wheel just cut the zip tie before assembly i would need to remove I think the battery right over here, so I would need uh, to cut this zip tie and remove the battery. So the battery right here. So here's the battery. It has a, I guess it, this one is a, a tail light as well. And let's see what the size. It says here 48 by 20 amps, so 960 watt hours, which is big, nice. First, I'm gonna try to attach the wheel. I will remove this uh, both nuts from both sides with a washer. That will make very easy to in install this uh, wheel. I remove completely, and I notice it makes really easy to install this way. Completely removing. It takes only a few seconds longer. Okay. And now you bring this. Uh, you would remove this uh, fork protection underneath, which is plastic, you don't need it, and you would insert the wheel in, like this, and it's very easy. So the next you would need to put the washer first, and just to put the nut back on both sides, and you would use the wrench to tighten it up from both sides. Then next you would need to insert this handlebar steam inside. Okay, if it doesn't go inside well, you need to untighten this screw over here. Okay, bolt, whatever you call it. And then you would insert it, basically slide it in. And this way out. And then you would retighten right on top. Then you would have to remove these two bolts in order to attach the handlebar. Next, you bring this handlebar up like this and reattach this bracket, the one you removed. And you can reposition the way it will fit you better. So I will not really tighten very well just to have this uh, handlebar stay there. The next step to attaching the fenders and the headlight. So let me show you the headlight and fenders. You would need to uh, remove this bolt first. Also from both sides remove these two bolts as well. Once you attach the fenders and the light, you would need to re-plug in this cable. You will see two arrow, you just match them, align and push from both sides and that's it. And the next step to attach the pedals, so make sure you attach right to the right and left to the left. So you can do it first with your hands and then you can use a wrench tool to tighten up and you do it from both sides and now you can insert the seat inside over here the seat post and adjust this uh, nut from one side and latch and latch it based on your height and the seat actually very nice the bike is assembled now, but not completely because I need to retighten all the bolts 
puca right pressure, a touch, uh, charge the battery and I will attach the battery. And here's how the Senada Osprey will look once you assemble it. It's a very simple assembly and you can follow the main instruction in this video or follow the manual. They have also quick guide how to assemble it as well. So let me show you how I fit this bicycle. I'm 5'11 and it fits me very well. Actually, I like it. Um, the handlebar adjustable as well. You can lift it up higher as right now or lower down. So it's like BMX style handlebar, which is great. Also, uh, low step through. So it's about 19 inch. So it's very nice for some people who uh, planning to use this as cargo or anything to carry on or just simple to get on because when it's a uh, cargo and let's say something basket on the back, it's very hard to flip fit over but with the step through it should be very easy also I want to show you how low the seat can go currently I'm 511 so this seat is perfect for me at this position and this is the lowest position so somebody who is 5'2 can easily fit this bicycle and also to ride it because you can lower down the handlebar lower the step through and as you can see it can go up up to this level which is also great for somebody who is 6'2 can easily to ride this bicycle because its position will be very comfortable and this bicycle comes with a torque sensor so torque sensors it means when you push the pedal it will start to ride so now we're gonna go over some spec for this Osprey Senada uh, cargo bike uh, they call it cargo bike uh, probably for the reason because it's a very solid uh, frame and as you can see the, uh, the rack it's built in to the frame so it can carry a uh, high capacity cargo I guess it uh, has also bamboo over here and you can remove it if you want to unscrew all these uh, six bolts the battery actually hidden underneath over here so it's actually very well designed because in case of the rain the battery pretty much safe underneath and the battery have also brake light right over here underneath so this is brake light and over here reflector so there's no tail light the battery size it's a uh, 48 by 20 amp so 960 watt hours which is pretty large and can take you for a long adventure about tires it's a 20 by 4 by Cho Young and it's a all terrain tires which is really nice also come with a dual fenders it's a plastic which is less noisy than metallic one so it's pretty good as well I want to show you how I install it so you need to install the fender right over here on this side not behind otherwise it will be not much space over here the headlight is pretty bright as well you can also attach the basket over here there's four screw over here it's for basket I think they're gonna sell it separately as I said before you can adjust the handlebar by unscrewing this bolt in the middle and lift it up or lower it down handlebar it's like BMX style 26 inch wideness and as you see it's nice comfortable um, you need to adjust to the position you like it comes with a Shimano derailleur unbranded uh, cassette 500 watt power motor which we're gonna test it today for speed and also for uh, hill climbing to see how good it's in a hill area if you can climb the hill about the fork it come with a, a nice uh, like a probably 60 millimeter travel I'm not sure if it's hydraulic or just spring fork but it works pretty good actually and it has a locking mechanism right here and also it come with a load adjustment right over here so you can adjust how soft you want the fork to be it comes with 180 millimeter disc brakes mechanical unbranded but we'll check it out how they work and same on the rear 
also 180 millimeters disc brakes and uh, it has a key not just uh, to remove the battery actually you have to turn it on in order to ride it or turn it off if you decide to leave so basically you need always to have key in order to ride a bicycle with a power without power you can still pedal it so it's kind of safety feature that people cannot ride it with like but again they can ride it away if they want to always uh, keep eye on your bicycle don't leave it alone and um, as you can see you can easily fit about four bottles of water over here so this space can be used as well as a kind of cargo if you need to carry it so you can use actually even one bottle if you want to and if you want to attach a bottle you can also attach a bottle holders right over here pre-installed already so i'm probably gonna leave one bottle over here i think it should be safe over here um I might just reattach with a rubber band but looks like it's a cool place also to carry some stuff if you want to or some small bag and um, the frame design is great so it's a low step through 19 inch which is great and uh, here's a look on the uh, handlebar to turn it on you just press a button you'll see uh, probably not very good on the camera but you can still see it it's not uh, very bright uh, on the sun most likely but you can see mileage over here also kind of uh, looks like a road so basically when you start to ride the bicycle uh, it will start to move let me show you you start to move and the bicycle can accelerate um, about 28 miles without load but we can check it out how much with load it comes with three different pedal assist one two and three only three pedal assist level also it comes with a walk mode right over here is a fit so when you press it and hold it the bike start to ride about three miles or six miles an hour this is a special uh, uh, kind of assist when you need a kind of power like to roll your bicycle uphill or in the sand not riding just uh, walk with your bicycle and then uh, on the left side this um, when you press on it like I like information it will uh, go through odometer maximum speed and average speed and uh, underneath you can see the trip mileage and um, odometer ring as well it comes with a stump throttle shimano shifter seven speed and i like the grips the grips on this bicycle really nice it's um with some rest over here also adjustable so basically it will not move around you can unscrew this and remove this cup to install the mirror like a side mirror so it should work really good for someone who's traveling uh, on the street or want to have mirror on the left side or both of them and you can attach the phone or anything on the front uh, handlebar so the bike looks really good and it's weight only 71 pounds with a large battery if you remove this battery it will be only like like uh, 59 pounds because the battery about 12 pounds weight and we'll go right now for a ride and to see how far the bike can go on throttle only with pedal assist and we'll go also for hill test all right so let's go for speed test also for the hill test and see how the actually torque sensor works on this bicycle and go over some uh, other like um, riding experience So as always, I'll go to the same spot where I test all my bicycles and let's go. So throttle only. It's about 13 on the GPS, 15 on GPS on display, 23 miles, 19, 21 on GPS. I'll go with GPS, 21 on GPS, 22 on GPS. And display show me 28 miles which is not accurate so basically it's going only 22 miles so far so the bike going about 22 miles the gps show me like 28 so the gps and display have different numbers and uh, I now I always try to go with GPS because 
probably different size of the tires I need to input in settings and in order to change it you have to have password and I don't have a password for that so let's go with pedal assist actually level 3 and it's torque sensor so basically you have to pedal it in order to go fast so it's 16, 17, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 I can feel the power cut off so I can feel the power cut off so from this pet test I understand the display and GPS show different numbers so about 23 maximum speed was reached but then the power cut off so this bicycle going 23 miles maybe I need to change something in the settings then it will go faster as they claim to be about 25 26 miles now which is pretty decent for cargo bike but I do feel like torque in this bike that's why i want to take it to hill test and to see if it can go uphill i think i can pedal long distance on this bike easily because the handlebar this grips very comfortable actually very nice very nice i like it this grips very nice um so first pedal assist level is uh 12 miles an hour and i, I pedaling comfortably and i i can feel the torque sensor so if i just pedal like ghost pedaling it will not move like activate the pedal assist but when i push on the bike i can hear and i feel the motor kick in so i'm gonna turn off the power now uh, so basically to go pedal assist level zero and switching to probably yeah uh, g number four and pedal like a regular bicycle i'll go with gps so now i'm about nine miles an hour pedaling pretty nicely it's not really hard and if your battery is dead or if you want just to ride as a bicycle you can still do it yeah, the seven speed now i'm on speed number four yeah, i can go number three will be even you have to pedal faster but it will be much easier and yes you can use this bicycle as a regular bicycle the position is good i think i have the seat too high for me right now so i can go even low if i want to or higher because the seat is, has enough space to adjust it so let's go testing the brakes as well so i'm gonna go to pedal assist level three go around the corner here and running is good it's very um, good stable bicycle actually the torque is kicking in very well so i can feel the torque really kick in now we're gonna do some uh, brake test so i'll go about until stop sign and then we'll break so we are on 19 miles an hour 20 and then i'll break so i get about three meters away almost on half street so yeah the mechanical brakes are working okay but they are not the best uh, again um, at speed 22 miles an hour it's pretty safe to ride with mechanical brakes 180 millimeters and i can feel the torque the torque on the throttle thumb throttle i like thumb throttle it's kicking very well it's even lifts the front wheel so the fork i can feel like and the fork actually nice so it's very comfortable smooth ride on this bicycle and now we're gonna go for hill test riding and see how the bicycle perform up to the hill if it's can really go uphill so currently we are very close to the hill also i notice the speed um, like uh, the torque sensor works kind of a little bit different right now i am on pedal seat level one and i'll show you if i going like pushing harder it can go 11 if i push even harder it'll go to 17 miles 18 
so basically up to the top on the pedal assist level one so regardless which pedal assist i switch it will still go to the top speed so something to do with the settings and i don't have access to settings because i have password so i'm gonna contact some other bikes to see if they can provide me the settings password so i can change it most likely also the the speed most likely is was uh, for level two and maybe i need to change to level three if they give me the success so i will change it and i'll do another video maybe with a retest the speed so now let's go for climbing throttle only very high steep hill over here so going about 12 miles 40 miles and see how far we can go on the 500 watt power motor so 13 11 9 eight seven six so it's pulling six miles five miles now so see if it can even pull up to the hill i can still balance at five miles an hour and motor works just fine but five miles an hour uh, last uh, 500 motors i think stop right over here i believe but let's see my 360 camera turn off usually <laughs> again on this part i'm not sure what's going on now i'm about four miles an hour but i will still give a chance if it can climb up to the tops of this hill about four miles an hour or i can hear the motor start to work louder maybe overheating but still pulling four miles an hour five miles an hour four so based on the GPS for miles an hour, still pulling. I'll give a chance to get uphill because many 750 motors would not get up to the top. So if I'm passing the point, many bikes would stop here. So still pulling up, even at four miles an hour still pulling up and i have a good feeling now that it will make it uphill regardless of the speed still made it four miles an hour which is very slow but the fact is that it's made it which is good and, yep so we're all the way on the top of this hill let me turn around so you can see the hill it's very steep very steep hill over here but it's made it uphill which is really great even the slow speed so the torque it's not it's working pretty good actually all right guys so after the first speed test i find this uh, uh, display show different speed versus to gps so i contact seen other bikes they gave me password code which is one two one two and to go to the settings and change the diameter of the wheel because the wheel was set to 29 inches which is incorrect so i set it up to 24 inches and see if the speed change and if it will be accurate so i hope it will go up to the highest speed so let's go for speed test throttle only and to see how fast it will go i'll go with gps again gps it's uh, 14 miles an hour 16 17 19 20 21 22 23 25 so far 25 miles an hour on display show me 27 20 yeah so it was solid 25 miles an hour so it uh, looks like um, I'm going to try right now to change to 23 diameter and see if the speed change. Okay, so I change the settings to 23 inch diameter wheels right now and I'll go to the same road because they're usually different and see if it will get to 25 miles an hour and if the diameters of the wheel will make this uh, display more accurate with GPS. So let's go and what the top speed so it's uh, gonna be 30 miles an hour on gps 16 18 on gps 19 20 21 23 24 25 is hit 25 yeah 25 actually the 
top speed was 25 miles exactly the same as previous test but display was very uh, more accurate much more accurate mm -hmm. so um, i would recommend to change to uh, diameter of 23 in settings and if you want to see how to do the setting change comment below i'll post separate video with uh, how to enter the code how to do the settings and i didn't tighten up very well handlebar so make sure you tighten up i'm not sure if it's an issue with that uh, but you need to tighten up very well this handlebar otherwise it will move when you brake very dangerous so make sure you tighten up i did tighten up it's supposed to be based on the new uh, new meter store but it still moved also i don't want to give you wrong information like uh, yes the pedal assist level one two three useful you can use all of them and uh, the difference i'll give you again uh, so right now i'm pushing like softly it's going 10 miles an hour if i switch to level two with the same power i pushing not harder it will start to go faster if you go to level three it will go faster so i don't have to push harder but it's all depend on your level of uh, exercise if you want to exercise harder and better level one can go all the way to 22 but if you want just continuously go faster but without pushing hard then you just simply switch pedal assist to level three and it will continuously give you more power so it does uh, really make difference between content sensors and torque sensors of course so the torque sensor uh, many people prefer right now because they can feel like um, it's like really exercise bicycle uh, really give you good experience by just pushing the pedals as much as you want to and you can uh, work out but if you have a bad knees some people prefer to go with condensed sensors but i noticed you don't have to push very hard on this bicycle to go fast because you can switch the pedal seat so if you ask me which one i would prefer a torque sensor like or versus condensed sensors um i like actually throttle it's very kind of power like gave you a good kick on this but i prefer torque sensors uh, on this bicycle uh, versus the condensed sensors for exercise if you don't want to get exercise if your knees are hurts some condensed sensor might be better but again um, you get better experience on with torque sensors as a bicycle like traditional so you just pedal it and the more harder you pedal then faster it will go and it will give you better assist also it will save more battery so basically this battery will last longer versus the condensed sensor because if you use only torque sensors it will give you more like uh, power as needed not just keep going because if you pedal with a condensed sensor it will just keep going fast with torque sensors like right now i'm pedaling only seven months an hour and if i push it it will start to kick in so basically i can still pedal without really hard pushing that like almost goes pedaling so it will be slow so that's a big difference so between condensed sensors and torque sensors uh, i like both depend on the bicycle and depend what i need from but it's become very popular right now torque sensors and again it's a great bicycle just um, great for new like new person who never rode an electric bicycle because the difference once you start to ride it it will give you more power as you need it when you push the pedals with condensed sensor it will just kick in regardless of how much you push on the pedal and uh, i think it's much better for people who never rode electric bicycle to use torque sensor because torque sensor are a little bit smoother ride and better uh, and that's about it for today i like this bicycle so far thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next video